So let's move on to our teaching moment today. And, and we are going to be talking about stride foot contact, which is probably one of the, one of the really important pieces to understand. And you're going to help us understand it a little better. I am. And actually, I'm going to teach how to recognize it when you're filming the pitcher's mechanics. So in the last two podcasts, we've talked about the stride. So it generated a lot of interest from coaches. I was getting tons of emails, tons of inquiries about things. It's a very fascinating part of the motion. And it is the part of the motion where you set up the rest of the pitching motion, which is the important part, which is delivering the actual ball. So Everybody these days is taking video and analyzing it. And unfortunately, unless you've gone to graduate school and really learned how to look at mechanics and understand mechanics from a kinesiological and a biomechanical aspect, you're not going to know how to look at film the way us professionals who do it for a living, who, you know, as I always say, I'm sitting in a classroom, you're on the baseball field, our expertise is different. So what I want to do is because there are a lot of errors with this, because of course, the phase of the motion that has the stride ends with stride foot contacting the ground. So people who don't know think, okay, so when the foot is flat, that means that's the end of the stride phase. So we now in this day and age of people trying to analyze mechanics, and by the way, I don't, I'm not a fan of people analyzing mechanics when they don't have the background to, because when you give a pitcher information from an analysis, if it is incorrect or not thorough, it could ruin the pitcher's head. It could have you off on the wrong start. So to me, you have to be skilled to do it. But there are many people doing it regardless of what I just said. And there's many apps that they give to normal people to analyze. And so I think everyone should, with respect, be careful about what they say or what information they generate. But what I'd like to do is if you're going to do it, I'd like you to at least understand where it is that you actually stop the video so you actually can look at this stride phase. And the stride phase is a place where when we as professionals are filming, we're going to stop the film when the front foot makes contact with the ground. And it is in that moment of the video analysis that we are looking at certain things. Biomechanists are measuring certain angles. And I, as a qualitative analyst, am looking at where are the body parts and are they in line with what the guidelines are that biomechanists put out. So it's kind of complicated. So in when you're in graduate school, you have to take almost every sport, and I'll stick with pitching, you have to take like the pitching motion you have to picture taking a, a, doing a spreadsheet and on the left is every single movement and every single phase and the purpose of it and what the biomechanical considerations are and what, and how you define it. So defining a phase is the most important part. And the reason when I see errors made where a coach will send me video and say, Look where his arm is at stride foot contact, because that's one of the main things I talk about all the time. Where is the arm at stride foot contact? Because it denotes whether the arm is in the right place, if it's late, if it's already going into the next phase. So people have become familiar with that terminology. But if you don't define it correctly, then you're looking at the arm saying, oh, look at his arms late, but maybe he hasn't touched down yet. Or, oh, look at his arm is in the right place, but you missed when he touched the ground. So the importance of knowing how to define this. So stride foot contact does not mean necessarily when the entire foot is down on the ground. Stride foot contact means when does any part of the foot make contact with the ground. And when any part of the foot makes contact with the ground, in terms of the way we do motion analysis and delineate phases, that marks the end of the stride phase and the beginning of of the rotation phase. It'll mark the end of the stride phase. And when we see that, and we know that phase comes to an end, 
So in the next phase, in the rotation phase, is where you're going to want to start to see rotation. Now, people, because it says foot contact, think it's, thinks it means when the foot goes down. Unfortunately, even though we'd love to see the foot go down in one piece, so then that guy, stride foot contact would be, boom, his foot's down. Most of the time, you're going to see the ball of the foot is down, the heel's not down, or you're going to see the heel making contact, but the front of the foot's not down. When any part of the foot touches down, and you know, Joe, sometimes I'm filming and I'm actually getting really low to the computer because I'm having to go back and forth frame by frame to actually, because he's touching down on dirt, to actually see, is his cleat in contact with the ground right here? And you have to kind of go back and forth and look at it to really delineate it. It's one of the most tedious things, but you have to be exact. And once you know, okay, that foot is down, then you take your eye. And the most important thing to look at in that phase is where is the arm? Where is the pitching arm? Is it in the correct, what baseball calls early cocking? And I call it the pre-stretch. Well, it is the early cocking phase and it is the pre-stretch. It's prior to stretching the shoulder. It's at a place where we don't want any shoulder stretching going on. It's a place where we don't want any rotation in the trunk going on. So when the foot goes down and it makes contact, you can go back and look at those other features. Now, the way you check this is you seek stride foot contact and you look and you'll see, oh, his hip isn't rotating forward, meaning his rear hip. Uh, that's the easiest one to see. And oh, his arm, it's in exactly where, and you can go to, I think, Joe, we've had YouTube videos and pictures on this topic, correct? Tons of stride foot contact arm photos. You can go there and say, okay, that's where it's supposed to be. And then when you click the next frame, you're going to see that his hip starts to turn as the rest of his foot goes down. So his rotation phase is now beginning. So every pitcher contacts the ground differently, and you have to kind of coordinate it. But if you don't get it right, you're not going to catch the nuances. For example, if the heel is down in that stride foot contact, and the back hip is almost halfway rotated towards the plate, that pitcher is rotating into his landing, and he's also disrupting the next phase, which is where he's supposed to start his rotation. So he started it early, which means this guy's not going to have the velocity production because he's already blown out his hip rotation in the stride phase where there should be no hip rotation. So if you don't do everything at the right time, what it does is it robs you of velocity and can also change the motion that's going to happen after that. So stride foot contact, it begins when the knee, from the top of the knee lift, as the knee starts to lower and the hip pushes the body forward, which we've talked about in the last two podcasts, and then whatever part of the foot touches the ground. And you have to be exact. And once you have that, stop the frame by frame and then leave it like that and then go back to see, one, where is his arm? So you'll know if it's in correct position or if it's late. And two, where is his back hip? And what we hope for is no hip rotation and that perfect angle to the arm where the lower arm and the upper arm are at a 90 degree angle and where the forearm is rotated. And it's it's hard to say what angle people would call it, but it has not gone into external rotation yet. The forearm is not pointing to the sky. The forearm is forward and as I said, there's many of reference pictures on my YouTube channel on this topic. So that is how you define stride foot contact. So for everyone who has been writing me and you're interested in this phase, this is the, the last piece of it. And this helps you understand if he, some of the things I instructed on the last two podcasts, is he actually doing, actually using his rear leg effectively enough so when he does touch down, it allows him to be in the right place. So everything is working together so that when that pitcher lands, 
he's in a perfect optimal position to then start the rotation phase, which then goes into the actual delivery phase. So that's the way we do it as professionals. That's great, Angel. You know, the when that front foot hits the ground is just so important. And I feel like we can never talk about it enough to help people understand how, how it should be and how it works. It, it really reminds me, I know I've said this before, it reminds me of when hitting coaches are taking a look at when batter's front toe hits the ground in their stride. I mean, it's a, I imagine it's a similar athletic movement. Mm-hmm. You know, as, as any hitting coach knows, if, if that front foot comes down and the, and the hands are anywhere other than up in the launch position, then you're going to have issues. Uh, or, and if the foot's down and the hips are leaking forward, there's going to be issues. And it's, it's, it sounds like a very similar kind of a evaluation point for pitching. Right. Because both both hitting and uh, this is true for golf, and, and uh, although golf doesn't have a moving foot, we hope, uh, but it's true in these motions where there is a phase where you're moving in a straight line and then a phase where you have to turn. And how well that straight line is established creates better turning. And we just don't mean that the turn that in, uh, in pitching, the body turns toward the plate. Remember, in the turning phase or the rotation phase, the shoulder is pre-stretching. And by the way, uh, this is something everyone can do. So for example, this is the first place I look. I don't, you know, I'm when I film, you know, everybody who does analysis, uh, qualitative, we have a certain way we look at things. And when I film a pitcher, I'm going to notice what he does when he's getting into what we call active balance, when he lifts his knee and which way he's facing. But I immediately go and establish the stride foot contact phase. I move frame by frame until I see that foot touchdown. And that's where I start my analysis because I want to see what did his active balance phase actually create because it creates the stride. So if he's got a problem here, I'm going to go and look to see why. If his arm's late, I'm going to say, okay, how'd he come out of the glove? Because if he can't, if his arm is late in this phase, it became late by something he did prior. And the only thing prior to this phase is the knee lift. And that's why I always say the knee lift, which should be not a part of the motion that creates such problems, oftentimes is one of the most problematic parts of the pitching motion. And anytime you see a problem here, you're going to see it on on balance. But with that being said, I want to talk about one thing. So this morning when we when I knew we were going to talk about Jake, I happened to go to a, a bleacher report and he, he there happened to be a video of him and it was from the front side. And so I said, oh, I should just, pl- oh, it was in slow motion as well. So I said, oh, I want to just see what he looks like. And I remember watching him. I'm from Chicago. And when the Cubs won their World Series back in 17, I think it was, I was in Chicago at a bar watching him pitch, uh, I don't know how many days. And I think it was in the, not the World Series, but the leading up to it. And I remember thinking what a fabulous pitcher he was. So I said, oh, and I don't know when this video was taken, but here I am watching it. And of course, because I'm watching it, always wanting to see the minute he starts his pitching motion, I'm going to use that pause button. And the second he touches down, I'm going to stop the video so I can see where his arm's at because he's got an arm problem. And sure enough, I had to do it two or three times. He had just touched down. And I looked at his arm and believe it or not, Joe, his forearm was pointing straight up to the sky, meaning he had gone into external rotation too early, not a late arm, but too early. Well, what does that do? It exposes the elbow to forces before it's supposed to be getting those forces. That's one way to look at it. His arm is not in the right place. The angle of his elbow, while it was fine, it's still in the wrong timing of the motion. Now, what do I know about that? Nothing. All I know is what I saw. If he were here and I were looking at video, I wouldn't even confirm anything till I saw it from three other views. But you can't help what you see. And when you see something, you go, oh, 
I need to see this from other angles. And that's how you do an investigation. But you have to notice, hmm, his arms in early external rotation. So then you look to see, huh, what kind of trouble could that be giving him with his elbow, knowing that he has this specific injury. That's how you use that stride foot contact phase to recognize and to see what you see that can explain things. But always, 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 coaches, if you're going to get into analysis, you look, you see, and all you do is without any definition or diagnosis, you go, hmm, And then you confirm and look from other views to see if what you think you saw, you actually did see, and also what implication it has. And then, of course, that should then lead you to, okay, why is this happening? Why did he turn his hip too soon in the stride phase? And usually for that one, you're going to see he was turning it when he was on his balance leg. But you're going to see weird things that connect to what the strange thing is you saw from the video. So you have to keep connecting the dots. That happens to be my expertise. It is like being a detective. But if you're going to do analysis, you need to know how to define that phase. It's not when the foot is flat. It's when it first touches the ground. Wow. There you go. Good stuff, Angel.